Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Beyond the Matrix with Salini. And actually, this is the Circle of Goddess Roundtable. This is our first and uh, of many roundtables to come, featuring women that are divine and powerful, as we all really are underneath. And um, they're going to bring their gifts, their wisdom to the table. And this is a very important new way for us to transform the planet. We're several goddesses together. And I'm going to talk about how that is powerful, can transform things very quickly. It's time for this to happen and all this blabber and talk about everything else that's going on. Um, it's really important for us just to get to the healing. Mm-hmm. So I've brought a couple of fabulous ladies on tonight. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about how to solve these problems. First, I have um, April Mata, or Villa Rose Mata, a dear friend of mine and one of the co-hosts of Spiritually Raw. She's a very dynamic lady. And her um, history goes back to doing financial planning and teaching people about their finances until they had their spiritual awakening And they decided they wanted to um, feature other people's wisdom and truth. And they created this incredible show, which everybody just loves. And and there she has, I can, I've watched her grow there too. She's an amazing lady. And hang on April, because now I'm also going to say Victoria Reynolds, who is a spiritual luminary and also a goddess in her own right and a different type of work that she does. She was born and raised in a polygamist fundamentalist cult in the mountains of Montana, where she experienced all the this drama and trauma that prepared her for her soul's work. We know about that. <laughs> and um, she left home as a teenager and went in search of her true path. In 2008, the economic collapse caused a holy shift in her life and brought her into her true soul purpose as a spiritual luminary and angelic walk-in. Her purpose on the planet is to teach spiritual freedom and help heal the broken hearts of humanity. So everybody, welcome to these two beautiful ladies. Hi, ladies. Uh, Thank you for inviting us to be here. Welcome to the Circle of Goddess Roundtable. Um, Would you like to add... April, to anything that I said, you know, I'm sure I forgot a few things about yourself. No, you pretty much covered it all. Um, You know, very very briefly, what you said was really dead on. We started out in financial services, long story short, you know, like a lot of people, it it was financially great. It was also mentally exhausting and also mentally boring at the same time. It was really unfulfilling. It was great in a lot of ways. Um, We had our own business, so we had flexibility and freedom, but at the same time, you know, you're in that rat race. You wake up, you go to work, you come home, you go to bed, you wake up, you know what I mean? And you get caught in that and everything else that is meaningful in your life, spiritually speaking, really gets put to the back burner because you get so caught up in this, what we know now, call it a 3D lifestyle. And uh, it, it becomes an obsession, really, where you're just constantly your whole focus is the next sale, the next sale, the next sale, making money, making money, making money. And um, you eventually are going to burn out. And that's exactly what happened to us. And we sold the business um, very quickly, very unexpectedly, very, very quickly. And uh, it took some time to come up, come uh, figure out what we wanted to do and um, went into something that we never, ever thought we would ever do. And here we are today, you know, so you, you, you never know where your life's going to lead. As long as you trust, you have faith, and um, you are willing to go on the journey of a, a life change. And, uh, you know, when you're sick and tired of feeling sick and tired, and you're like, that's it, I'm, I, I'm, I'm ready. Whatever the universe has for me, I'm ready to take it on. And that's really what the journey's been. It's been awesome. Well, thank you. And I remember when you had me on and I had the conversation with both of you about your trip to India. It really sticks in my mind because Jay being from, well, he's born here, but his parents are from India. 
Mm -hmm. And you guys were in that long line trying to get some kind of a blessing going up the mountain and going up the mountain. It could have been hours of hours of waiting, but they called you into the inside of the mountain in some kind of a, a thousand of people. Yeah. And they blessed you in there, didn't they? And that was an experience of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, my mother in law, we were with my mother in law. Uh, obviously, she's fluent. And uh, we were standing in a long line. It was, uh, I forget at the time because there's so many different ceremonies going on at the time. And we had to walk all the way up this mountain. I mean, where literally you would see people that were crippled and they'd be on their hands and their knees and they're literally crawling in agony, but they don't even care. They're just focusing on getting to the top of that mountain because that's where, that's where everything was. And they, they had the, the violet light there, and the whole goal was to get to the top of the mountain to be able to put your hand <clears throat> into the violet light. It's this violet light that um, has been burning literally for thousands of years. Oh, it's, wow. It's incredible. It's like uh, inside the mountain, but it's only carved out like yay big. Mm -hmm. And the violet light, and you can put your hand in it. And there were literally thousands of people because there was it was a very auspicious day. And um, a high priestess, two of them, kept looking at Jay and I, and I, I was like, mm, that's a little weird. And then they came over to us and they said, you know, I didn't understand what was going on. Jay's mom was kind of like in shock, but she couldn't read, you know, understand the language. And uh, she told the, the high priestess, um, gurus, whatever you want to call them, the sages, they uh, told Jay's mom that they wanted to take Jay and I and um do a puja and her jay's jay's mom i was like what's guy i was like then and i'm like what is going on and uh, she's like go go just go and i'm like and uh we went into the temple and they did what you would really refer to as a coconut ceremony ceremony <laughs> where, <laughs> yeah it was awesome i, I, I actually I, yeah i saved the coconut for years and um they put all of the attire on us the robes and um, everything we got, they let, you know, wanted us to take it home with us and um, uh, the, all the beads and the ceremony or prayer beads. And uh, they started this entire puja in the middle of a temple with everyone watching. And then there's Jay and I, and I was, uh, wasn't really sure what was going on, but um, I just rolled with it and it was a truly magical experience. So they did a coconut smashing that day. <coughs> And for the best way for me to describe it would be the coconut smashing of sorts because uh, they had all the coconuts and and they did all the um, the fire, the ceremony, uh, blessing, and they you know they throw all, all different types of incense and stuff into the into the fire, and um, it was pretty extensive. And you know they go around you and then they put all the pieces on you one by one. Yeah, it was pretty extraordinary. Well, what I believe happened, because spirit speaks to me through, like, just meeting you guys the way we did, and I sensed something, is that this was an initiation into this work that you're now doing of speaking truth to the world and bringing, bringing important voices forward that nobody else would ever listen to, you know? Yeah. And, um, these kinds of ceremonies, which I've tried to tell people, and I'm really glad you guys had one, these are the things I do on my website, the Pujas. I'm in fact this coming weekend. I'm doing a combination of Ganesh, Ganesha obstacle removal and coconut smashing for um, ending karma and breaking open obstacles so we can move forward more quickly. When mm -hmm. I do these things, it makes a difference. I'm, I'm always getting Pujas done for me. I have somebody in India who does Pujas for me almost every day. And as you can see, my life has continued to improve you know, in spite of everything. So I think that there was this was your launch pad, that thing. Because next thing you know, you have this show and you're meeting all of us and you guys are super successful, aren't you? Thank you. Thank you. We're only as, as successful as, you know, because of all of you that have gotten us uh, to this path. And we're we're so grateful. And it's really just it's been such a blessing. We've been able to meet the most amazing people and have conversations that like, you know, Jay and I will leave a show and we'll be like, you believe this is our life? <laughs> this is incredible. Who gets to have these kinds of conversations throughout their day? 
And um, we do not take it for granted at all. We really uh, are just feel so blessed and so grateful. And it's it's a it's the, a ride of a lifetime. Well, both of you are very positive, so that has a lot to do with the manifestation that's happening. And I want to talk about that in a minute. Um, but thank you for sharing. I just wanted to go over to Victoria for a minute. And did I miss anything? Anything more you want to say about what launched you on your spiritual path, Victoria? And welcome, by the way, to the Goddess Circle. Ah, thank you. Um, what launched me in my spirit? Well, yeah, it, it started with the 2008 recession, but of course, nothing is ever just one thing. Um, right about that time, I had two small children. I had a, a two-year-old and a five-year-old. And I call my daughter my spiritual catalyst. Oh, because at the time I was basically an atheist. I had when I left my parents religion as a teenager, I wanted nothing to do with religion or church of any kind. And although although when I was 21, somebody did introduce me to a center for spiritual living. <clears throat> and but I didn't actually see that as church because that's where I went to get my self-help books. <laughs> so I I started in the 1980s on reading self-help books. You know, um, Louise Hay and Wayne Dyer and all those guys, I got introduced to them in 1987. But I I didn't put spirituality and self-improvement into the same category. I just didn't equate them together. So I would get my self-improvement books. And the only place I would get them from a spiritual center, and then eventually I figured out how to get them at bookstores. So I've been on a self-improvement path for a very long time. And... Um, but in 2008, right around that time, my daughter said to me, Mommy, sometimes I can be in two places at the same time. Or she would say, Mommy, sometimes when I'm sleeping, I leave and I go play with my angel friends. These are things I had never even heard of before. I was like, wow, that's interesting. Didn't know people like I didn't think angels were real because the only my only concept of angels was from my parents' religion. And I never heard of bilocating or any of that. So I started learning really interesting things from my five-year-old. And, um, and then at the same time, that's when we had the 2008 economic collapse. And I lost, um, you know, I lost my business and my husband lost his business. And then the, um, we ended up in foreclosure and bankruptcy and the whole thing that came with 2008. Well, one of the things I found is that awakening experiences tend to, to come as a result of something that is that painful that brings us to our knees. It's usually involves the death of something. In my case, it was the death of my business and this dream that I had. Um, I had, I had a business that was a day spa dedicated to moms and it was going to be a franchise concept. And so I had this, this death of this dream. And what, what ended up happening is that because of that business died, it actually opened me up to doing the work that I'm actually here to do. 